Hey guys, this is Dan from RED and I'll be covering our new image processing pipeline, IPP2, in RED Cine X and its overall workflow. What you're really going to take away from this video is that we have moved towards familiar industry standards and a simplified and streamlined workflow. Because we have separated technical from creative with our new pipeline, the first thing I'm going to check is our preferences and monitoring to make sure all my settings are set properly. So let's go into RED Cine X preferences and select image pipeline. The first thing you'll see is File Browser Clips. This will let you dictate how you want to view your R3D footage while searching in the media browser. The default settings are set to whatever pipeline was selected in camera, however you can override to Legacy or the new IPP2 controls. The same goes for new projects you set up in Red Cine X, of which you can select IPP2 or Legacy. And finally when importing projects into Red Cine X, it will prompt you to convert to IPP2 or leave as is. Now for IPP2 monitoring, which will depend on what type of display you're on and what it is calibrated to. The default settings are set to Rec. 709 and BT1886, which is the standard for HD displays. However, there are multiple options. For example, you can change the color space to Adobe 1998 for photos, P3 for that wider color space on projectors, or Rec. 2020, which is a commonly used HDR color space. Speaking of HDR, you'll notice that you can change the gamma curve to HDR 2084 and select the peak nit value of the HDR monitor you are working on. This is helpful for HDR displays that don't incorporate a native roll-off. We can also save these settings to help jump between systems and setups. Let's now open up our R3D file and check out our new three-step process. We have image primary, which are look independent controls such as exposure and white balance, image grading for all your creative coloring decisions, then finally, image output transform for your output specific settings. One thing to keep in mind is this is all metadata and can be changed at any time, keeping your workflow non-destructive. So let's start with step one, the image primary panel. You'll notice that the color space and gamma curve are always going to be red wide gamut RGB and log 3G10. Red wide gamut is designed to encompass all the colors that the red sensor can see without clipping while Log 3G10 will preserve the camera's dynamic range and give you the full range of work in, be it SDR or HDR. This will bring consistency to your workflow because you will always have the same starting point every time you work with red footage. Next is ISO, which I can raise or lower. We also have Exposure Adjustment, formerly named FLUT, for more of a fine-tuned adjustment to exposure instead of the bigger jumps like in ISO. We have an eyedrop tool if you want to pick out the white balance, or you can manually adjust the Kelvin, and tint yourself. Step two is image grading. We fully support industry standard 3D LUTs and CDLs. You'll notice that you can load a 3D creative LUT made in Baselight, Resolve, or whatever grading software you use. I can also load a CDL file or create my own look with power, slope, offset, and saturation. Step three is output transform. You'll see our output tone map, which will apply a high, medium, or low contrast curve. We also have none if you created a 3D LUT with your own tonal curve. Next is highlight roll-off, which will be based off your STR or HDR display. We have a hard, medium, soft, very soft, and none. There are also output transform settings for exports if you wanted to create a specific file format like ProRes, DPX, or whatever you prefer working in. You'll notice in the export pipeline you have the full graded IPP2 mode which will take all your creative adjustments and export them into a color space and gamma curve of your choice. Or you can go with a completely ungraded red wide gamut log 3G10 to build a look from the ground up within base light, resolve, or whatever grading system you like using. So that's our new pipeline that can be applied to all red footage. One of the biggest takeaways is that grading operations now occur in a single well-defined wide gamut log space. Now go ahead and test it out yourself and stay tuned for future episodes of RedTech.